And Nathan Phillips is with us now. Mr. Phillips, good morning to you. Good morning. First of all, first question, how are you doing? This has been a whirlwind few days for you. You find yourself on the front page of every newspaper. How are you doing and how are you feeling? Well, I woke up strong this morning and with a really positive attitude and I, uh, I had an opportunity to go and to a traditional prayer ceremony and um, that was the other night and yesterday I woke up with all kinds of good feelings in my heart and for all those who've been uh, been mean to me mm. want to forgive them I believe you've had a chance to see the interview that the the student at the center of this gave what was your reaction what did you think of what he had to say about this encounter I was I was upset I was made to sit down and watch it why is that Um, I read his statement and then when I got into the first, well, I started, somebody tried to show it to me before I went to my prayer ceremony and I got into about the first 30 seconds, 40 seconds of it and I said, well, that's all I needed to hear. And, and what was your reaction to it? How did it make you feel? What did you think about his words and his explanation and his version of this encounter? Um, uh, coached and written up for him, insincerity, um, lack of responsibility, you know, those are the words I, I came up with and, and, uh, but then I went to go pray about it and then I woke up and woke up with this, uh, forgiving heart and, so I forgive him. He, he said when I asked directly that he didn't think he owed an apology, but he does wish that he had walked away. Was that enough for you or do you think he should have apologized? Well, if there's an apology, there'd be an apology for his own behavior to a lot of other people's beside me. I'd be like way down on the list of his people he needs to apologize to. But because of the tomahawk chop and the mocking and the, those things, and, and in one of his statements, he did say that he was the leader of that. He got permission from his uh, school teachers. So, you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of times he could have walked away. Did you hear anyone say, build that wall? It isn't audible on the video clips, I think, that are out there, but did you hear that? You know, I did hear that. And I have seen some out there on the um, on the internets uh, where there's you can hear them saying "build that wall." And how did you feel in that moment? Did you yourself feel threatened? Well, all that anger was directed at those four individuals: the black Israelites and and the youth there. Um, and it was getting really explosive and so when I put when we were when I started praying to, I asked creator God to protect me to stand with me and I was just to witness what was happening and then when I put myself in prayer and used that drum to to reach to God um, that mass of young men surrounded me and the folks that were with me. And it was a, a moment to, when I was in prayer, it wasn't that I felt like I could stop anything or do anything, but <clears throat> I felt like I was spiritually moved into that center into that center of that whirlwind, as you were saying. I asked the young man this question. I'll ask you the same thing. Do you think in that confrontation, that encounter that went on and on, should you have walked away? He's, he said, yes, he thinks now he should have walked away. Do you think, sir, you should have walked away? That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to walk away. There was a spot, there was a place where I could 
take my people's because we were surrounded. Mm -hmm. We couldn't go right, we couldn't go left, back, you know. And then that I was still in prayer, still singing. Um, and then I was looking past the crowd. And I took that first step and that crowd backed up. I took a second step and that crowd started scattering or breaking apart there. And I took a third part and I actually seen a, a clear space. I said, that's the space. And we started going that way. And from somewhere, this, from a clear space, a person was there. You feel you were blocked. Oh, I was blocked. There has also been some question about the nature of your military service, and this is a good chance to clear it up. You were a veteran. You served in the Marine Corps. Some have said that you were a Vietnam veteran. I don't believe you have said that. What exactly is the nature of your service? <clears throat> I went to boot camp. I stayed there. That Marine Corps was a, a reservist guy. So I stayed in the reserves for a couple years. That was during the time of the American Indian Movement and the AIM trials, and there was a lot of things going on during those years. And the Vietnam War was still going on. So, so to be clear, you served in the Marines at the time that Vietnam was going on, but you did not serve overseas. What I've always said is I've never stepped foot in South Vietnam. And that's, I don't know how clear, how much clear can that be? You know, ever since I got out of, when I got out of, when I was discharged May 5th, 1976, I was told when I got out, don't wear your uniform. Don't say you're, don't say you're a veteran. People don't like you out there. Finally, I wonder what you feel now. What do you hope happens now? Would you want to meet with these students? What are you hoping comes of this moment in our culture? I find myself having to, even though I'm angry, I still have that forgiveness in my heart for, for those students. And that forgiveness even goes to those chaperones and those teachers who should have who should have just said, you students, this isn't the place. And to talk with them now, when they, when the statement, and I did hear their, the statement that he wrote and, and the video statement he put out, um, what I'm led, what, I, what, the, what it says is he has a PR firm. So those aren't even his words if he has a PR firm. You know, some sincerity, some um, some sense of uh, responsibility for his actions. You know, these are some of the things that if we ever did meet, it would be those adults. I would like to ask why I didn't have those school administrators there and ask them why didn't they say no. Have you feared for your safety since all of this has happened? The students have received death threats. Have you feared for your own safety? You know, I didn't, I didn't have any problems until the students started saying they were getting death threats. And then as soon as that happened, it started happening with me. Well, Mr. Phillips, you have certainly been through a lot in these, these last few days. Thank you, Mr. Phillips, for spending this time with us and sharing your story. It's much appreciated. Yep.